हेलो एवरीवन टॉपिक फॉर टूडेज डिस्कशन इज डी कैल्सिफिकेशन तो डी कैल्सिफिकेशन इज रिमूवल ऑफ कैल्शियम सॉल्ट बाय एक्शन ऑफ एसिड और चिलेटिंग एजेंट्स और इलेक्ट्रोलाइट्स सो रिमूवल ऑफ कैल्शियम सॉल्ट फ्रॉम टिश्यू बाय एक्शन ऑफ एसिड्स चिलेटिंग एजेंट और इलेक्ट्रोल तो डी कैल्सिफिकेशन इज रिक्वायर्ड इन बोनी स्पेसिम और टीथ टेरेटोमास कंटेनिंग बोनी टिश्यू कैल्सिफाइड एथ्रोमास सच टिश्यूज मस्ट बी ट्रीटेड to remove the calcium and phosphate salts which are deposited in them so all the bony specimens they should be adequately fixed before decalcification and fixative used is 10% neutral buffered formalin it is the fixative of choice the fixatives containing chloroform like carnaise fluid or mercury should be avoided due to extreme chemical toxicity they are toxic and mercury makes bone radio opaque and unsuitable for specimen radiography so fixative of choice is formalin 10% neutral buffered formalin so uh, the criteria for good calcifying agents are the calcifying agent which completely remove the calcium from the tissue which cause minimal damage to cells and tissues which cause non impairment of subsequent staining and reasonable speed should have reasonable speed or will take less time for decalcification the so choice of decalcifier used depends on the urgency of case the degree of mineralization of the tissue and the subsequent staining technique required so decalcifying agents are acids or chelating agents acids are used for routine purpose and strong acid can be used or weak acid the strong acid used is nitric acid as it is strong so it is its action is twice as fast as formic acid but the formic acid it give better tissue preservation and better stain pernis fluid is other decalcifying agent which is a combination of 10% nitric acid absolute ethanol and chromic acid and despite of acids we can also use chelating agents edta so the decalcifying agent should be at least 1 ounce per gram of tissue volume required of decalcifying agent is at least 1 ounce per gram of tissue and the decalcifying agent should be changed once a day until decalcification is completed so change is required daily glass jars of 4 to 8 ounce size should be used and there should be gauze platform supported by glass rod frame in the jar so that the bone block rest at or little below the middle of the fluid test for completion of decalcification or how the end point of decalcification is noted 
it can be noted by physical method x ray chemical method chemical test or bubble test the physical method are by touching or needling but this method is not recommended because it may damage the tissue x ray is a good method but it is not always convenient and it cannot be used when fixative used is mercury chloride the chemical test is favored and another is bubble test bubble test is an unre is unreliable as an end point but it is used to check the progress of decalcification the chemical test for uh, noting the end point of decalcification in this we add 5 ml of decalcifying fluid that fluid which has been in contact with bone block for at least 3 hours 3 to 12 12 hours we'll take 5 ml of decalcifying fluid in test tube then we'll add strong ammonia and 0.5 ml of saturated ammonium oxalate solution so in a test tube add 5 ml of decalcifying fluid then strong ammonia and 0.5 ml of saturated ammonium oxalate if the fluid remains clear then decalcification is completed if cloudiness develops due to calcium oxalate formation then decalcification is not completed the bubble test it is used to check the progress of decalcification so how bubbles are formed the acid reacts with calcium carbonate which is present in the bone and will form carbon dioxide which is seen as a layer of bubble on the bone surface so bubbles are formed due to carbon dioxide it is unreliable as a end point this test is unreliable as an end point but to check the progress of decalcification it is used so first we are going to study decalcifying agent nitric acid 10% nitric acid is used it is the fastest decalcifying agent or decalcifier the end point has to be carefully watched otherwise progressive tissue damage occurs and staining is impaired so it will lead to tissue damage and impaired staining further disadvantage is nitric acid undergoes spontaneous yellow discoloration due to formation of nitrous acid nitric acid is converted to nitrous acid which will give yellow discoloration that will stain and damage the tissue but it can be prevented by adding 0.1% urea in it when decalcification is complete acid must be removed by three changes of 70 to 90% ethanol first will fix the selected block of bone for 2 to 3 days in buffer neutral formalin so fixation is important first fixation for 2 to 3 days then place it in a mixture of 95 ml distilled water and 5 ml nitric acid change the nitric acid daily until bubble ceases to evolve from the tissue so for 1 to 3 days that wash in three changes of 90% alcohol then dehydrate clear it and embed it paraffin wax so 5 ml of nitric acid and 95 ml of distilled water and decalcification takes 1 to 3 days next is formic acid formic acid is gentle on tissue that is tissues are not ruined if they remain in formic acid a day beyond the completion of decalcification 
when used in stronger concentration its action is as rapid as nitric acid but it is safer to touch than nitric acid and addition of citrate in formic acid will accelerate decalcification by chelating the calcium as it is liberated from bone so the aqueous formic acid well fixed 2 to 5 mm thick bone blocks are placed in concentrated formic acid 5 to 25 ml and 100 ml of distilled water in 100 ml of distilled water change daily until decalcification is completed 1 to 7 days are <coughs> taken by cell for decalcification by the tissue for decalcification replace the fluid with 5% sodium sulfate overnight then wash it for 12 to 24 hours in running tap water this washing is very important for 24 hours in running tap water if we are using aqueous formic acid then dehydrate in graded alcohols and then clear in chloroform. Formic acid could be used in combination with sodium citrate. Well fixed bone blocks are placed in mixture of equal parts of formic acid and sodium citrate solutions. Change daily change is required until decalcification is completed. Decalcification takes place in one to two days. While in aqueous formic acid, 1 to 7 days are required. Then wash in running tap water for 4 to 8 hours. While in case of aqueous formic acid, the running tap water, washing in running tap water is for 24 hours. Then dehydrate, clear, and embed in wet. Now, another decalcifying agent is EDTA. EDTA combines with calcium forming the soluble non-ionized complex. EDTA used is 2 to 4 ounce per gram of bone and it is used as 5 to 7 percent solution of disodium salt buffer to pH 7 to 7.4 with phosphate buffer. So 5 to 7 percent solution of disodium salt pH 7 to 7.4. Solution is to be changed every 2 to 4 days. While the acids, if you are using acid as decalcifying agent, daily change is required. So if you are using EDTA, then solution is changed every 2 to 4 days. Decalcification will take 4 days to 8 weeks depending on the bone block. So it is a slow decalcifying agent it takes four days to eight weeks it has certain advantages over the acid we used advantages are it does not interfere with staining it does not distort the tissue and does not destroy the enzyme EDTA is a slow decalcifying agent but with certain advantages without interference with staining, do not distort the tissue and do not destroy the enzyme. Surface decalcification. Surface decalcification it is required when partially calcified bone or unsuspected mineral deposit in tissue are found during the paraffin sectioning. So during paraffin sectioning, if you are if we are finding calcified bone or mineral deposits, surface decalcification is done to prevent knife damage and tearing of the tissue section. The exposed tissue surface is placed side down in 1% HCl or 10% formic acid for 15 to 60 minutes. Acid removes a few micrometers of calcium from tissue surface permitting few sections to be taken from decalcified layer. Thank you.